Yeah, I just picked up this nine foot six inch Tika Galant. Really, really nice rod. It is medium, nine foot six, eight to 12 pound test line, three eighths to three sixteenths ounce weight. And it has what is known as, look at it, look at those guides, aren't they cool? These are halo guides. Look how cool these halo guides are. I'm gonna give this a try. Hey, aloha guys, Scooby Chris. I'm gonna show you really fast what I do to make my leaders. I write it on a piece of cardboard and I got one slot missing. I need a 10 pound leader with a dual hook. And the reason why is because the dual hooks, when the shank straight comes down here with, with the hook over here, set up the hook tip turning outwards and it will catch the reef, it comes in. So it, when the fish swallow, it's a better hookup, and when it hits the reef, it bounces off the reef instead of getting hooked up. So we're prepping for a shallow reef leader. So this is my 10 pound test line. What I'm gonna do, is so I'm going to roughly estimate, doesn't have to be exact what eight feet is. I, I kind of know already because I've done it so many hundreds of times. Okay, got my line cut. The most important thing is my hook. Okay, that's what the old do looks like. As you can see, the shank of that hook is straight and then the tip comes into the shank. That's what you want for shallow water so it won't get caught on the bottom. Now, all the stringy stuff is glow thread. So at nighttime, it glows. Daytime, doesn't matter but I call this teaser threads it's very good because it increases your hookup now it increase the hookup with the hook what I do is I offset certain hooks come factory offset which are very strong because if the offset is from the factory can't beat that but this one didn't have that so we're gonna offset it own by just turning it a little yeah I know it was kind of fast I am strong. <laughs> look at that. If you look, see how that is? The hook tip is slightly offset. That's the only thing you have to do, just a slight offset. All right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to tie my favorite Palomar knot. Now, it's hard to double up the line to put to the tiny, tiny little hole. So what I'm going to do is let me see now we're gonna put the line through single I'm gonna come back the same way I went in hmm boy this is tight because it is a very very small hole plus you have the uh, thread in there in that hole already so what I just did is I went through the hole and I 
there it is. Okay. What I did is I doubled the line by going through the hole singly and coming back the other side singly. So now everything is all nice and double. See that? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make Palomar, make the, the loop, put the hook, put all this thread through the loop. And this is, I use my scissors, the handle here, so I can just pull it taunt. There it is. You don't have to wet the line because this is only 10 pounds. Once you get up to about 15, you're gonna have to wet it because it is, it won't slide as easy. I cut off within a quarter inch the excess. Look at that. All right. Now, let me see now. I have my teaser thread on, right? So what I'm gonna do is also add little green glow bead oops let's try that again see little green glow bead followed by a red bead red is going to look like the eyeballs see stack them upon one another Okay, now we can double the end of the line, like so. Put that into a barrel class swivel. Now, the swivels I use are black. Everything I'm trying to do is to hide what's there. Uh, uh, it, a bright silver object would be seen, okay? This is the first time I've, I've tried one this small, so it's hard to put the the line through it, and it didn't work. So I'm going to do it, do this again, where I'm just going to put single line through. See, single line through, single line going back. like so so now we just see that we doubled it it's modifying the palomar that's all it is see make a loop there's your loop pull it through boom beautiful you're done I love palomars I never had the knot break okay cut with it a quarter inch Boom, you're done. Now, this one here, I am going to show you. I'm going to preset this with the orange CHL lure. I only use CHL. You can use whatever you want, but this is a proven winner for me. This is a new one called the Bug. Works very well. Okay, and then I'm just going to twirl this on the cardboard keeper here. It's just always going to tell me what I have. This way you can write down the different styles of hooks, the different pound test lines. You go out in the field, no guesswork. You look at this, you know exactly what you got. There you go. Thank you. Okay, we're here at our whipping site. Gonna put our rig up now. Take rubber bands off. Okay. Attach the two-piece 
come on okay there we have the 3000 with the the launch now what we're going to do use our pre-arranged leader system we got 10 pound sakura mainline the dual number six and the reason why we want to use that here is because the duals the tips are cur curved in so it won't catch shallow reefs using CHL completely hooked lures these grubs are fantastic Orange one works very well with the peel, which are small Trevally jacks. Let's see now. Okay. Ooh, it's kind of cold this morning. Hopefully it doesn't mean it's going to rain. Okay. okay. The swivel through this like this. So, cinch it up. Now we're ready to boogie. Alright. Okay, first cast of the morning. That one. Got a hook up on the first cast. Pretty cool. And he's taking line. Woohoo! First cast of the morning. All right. Woo! This is six pound test. I don't want to overhorse it. Like, but he's taking line. Man, it's so nice to hit something on the first cast. So unusual. On my brand new outfit that I got from Charlie's Fishing Supply. Nine and a half foot Tika Gallant with a 3000 Stratic loaded with six pound test. This is the uh, UFO six pound test from Japan. Yellow line, so it disappears once it hits the water. Well, first the fish went to the left. Now it's in front of me. Pretty cool that I got it on the first cast. Whoa! Hoo -hoo! Nice fun battle on light tackle. All right. Most likely a papillo, because I was using CHL orange grubs, which is the papillo candy. It's right in front of me, about 50 feet. Putting a nice bend in the rod. I always like using light tackle. 
come on, coming in. But he doesn't want to come in. Still taking line back. Oh, I love this light tackle stuff. Woo! When the fish wants line, you let him take the line. Wonder what he is. I could be a moi, but I got a feeling it's the uh, papio. I see leader. Whoa, 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 whoa! He don't like the shoreline. Definitely does not like the shoreline. Nice fun battle. One thing you don't want to do is horse it in right here to fish. Not to catch fish for the table, but just for the sheer enjoyment. Okay, it's coming in. Splashing, whatever it is. I see colors, but feel. Yeah, baby. This is what it's all about. It's like a decent one. Tell you, these CHL gloves, they're awesome. Timing with the swells. Look at that beauty. Whoo, that's a nice one. Time it. Let it come in. Wow, look at that. Big Omiru. Nice. Just snag by accident the best bait around. Lizard fish. Let's see what happens. Are well, we just gonna check out the lizard? Just let it sit on the bottom. I've done very well in the past just tossing lizard fish out. Don't have a rod holder today, but I'll just hold on to it, see what happens. Just let it sit there. See what happens. You can try all different styles of retrieval. Doesn't have to be the same. There's different ways of retrieval means you're gonna give the lure different actions. So you just have to keep changing up your style. See if there's anything out there that might tempt the fish to hit. That's all. It's not an exact science. 